you mentioned the 12 narrators and I wondered did you have this body of material the desire to write the novel and then did a, did a light bulb come on and you, you could you could see it as a polyphonic narrative rather than as a single investigation <coughs> by a detective well it took actually that, that light bulb did come on but it took a while to come on um, you know I finished Tokyo Year Zero which is a single narrative voice really and I, what I wanted to do was um, and I began the novel using two detectives and there are remnants in a way that the, the, the ruins of these narratives remain in the book but it was alternating detective voices one detective who believed Hirasawa was guilty one detective who believed he was innocent and it went back and forward throughout throughout and yet as I said the case has so many kind of conspiracy theories linked to it and different people have so many different opinions about it that I felt that like you couldn't really shoehorn if you like all the different perspectives into these two detectives and and also to some degree I felt I was kind of repeating a formula I'd already done a bit with the Red Riding Quartet and so thinking say more of GB84 the book I wrote about the miners strike where I use many different narrative voices again some something like the miners strike which touched touched the lives of millions of people and a case like this which touched again not millions but thousands of people when you're dealing with very very complex stories the novel can seem an immensely limiting form it was very constrictive um, the way it was the way I was trying I was approaching it and then to open it out and to make it 12 seemed to to, to be able to put all the different versions of the truth in inverted commas forward and if you like let me and let as a writer and you as a reader decide which is the version you believe and you had a Japanese antecedent in doing yeah. that because what the, the light bulb was switched on by Akutagawa and the ghost of Akutagawa because um, yeah I mean Akutagawa is, is probably best known because um, Kurosawa filmed two of his short stories as Rashomon and people talk about the Rashomon effect the film Rashomon is based basically on the story in a grove and Akutagawa in this story he, um, uses the, the rape of a woman and the murder of her husband as the basis for six different competing narratives it's a short story and I thought I mean other people have done it many people have done it but, I, but this was the light bulb for me that, that that gave me a way to kind of approach this crime and to present these 12 in many, in many ways conflicting narratives mm. and that, that's a short story but in moving to the broader canvas of a novel it clearly presents greater challenges both for the novelist and for the reader yeah, it does. I mean, it was challenging to write. I, I, and and, and I've, I've, I suppose some some people might find it challenging to read. But to to, to I mean, in, in one way, you could read it, if you like as twelve short stories, and actually with with within themselves, I actually think they're quite straightforward. I think the, the problem is, and it's the problem I find with my daily life, is when you put the when when the narratives are competing against each other, is when the problems arise. But in themselves, they're relatively straightforward. Well, almost all of them are. And you mentioned the importance of not losing sight of the victims when you're writing about mm -hmm. crime. And it seemed to me that bound up with that was putting the figure of a writer in the foreground yeah. of this story, implicating yeah. the writer. So it yeah. wasn't simply an yeah. omniscient figure yeah. looking down on the, the doings yeah. of, of human beings. Yeah, no, and I, I mean, the, the, the writer in the book is actually a cat. I mean, it's not you know I mean you know anybody who puts pen to paper is indulging in some kind of vanity but it's not actually I mean the writer is a character in his own right it's not actually me particularly but you know it goes back to this but, but for, for all along I've had this kind of very uncomfortable relationship with writing about crime in the form of a novel and and I mean obviously specifically the crime novel because you you know there's no escaping the fact that for, for, for very many people read crime novels and myself included as a form of entertainment and I've never felt very comfortable with with the notion of crime as entertainment whether that be imagined crimes or real crimes because I mean you know murders even if you imagine a murder you are, there, there are obviously still precedents every day and, and we turn this into a form of entertainment and, and, and I mean there's a lot in the book is to do with the if you like the ethics a morality of, of turning crime, I meant specifically true crime, into a form of entertainment. You mentioned the fact that some of the, pe the pieces could almost, some of the chapters could almost be read as a separate yeah, narrative, yeah. like short stories. Yeah. And that really rang true for me with the narrative of the gangster in yeah. particular. 
And that seemed to me that, whereas most of the narratives are confined yeah. in the 1940s, that one really seemed to to reach out to yeah. to sort of 21st century Japan. So say yeah, something about yeah. him because I, I was really fascinated that, that that really sort of opened a door in the narrative. Yeah, well, I'm glad you. Yeah, because you know <coughs> some people are not keen on that, but to me that that actually, if if you because all along I've seen the you know to be my usual pretentious self the, the architecture of a trilogy. And actually, that narrative, that particular gangster narrative, comes at what will be the middle point of the entire trilogy. And it opens up, it's like, in a way, the trilogy is a bit like a kind of mountain, and that's the peak of a mountain, but really sums up. In that narrative, to me, you've got everything that is wrong with, specifically, Japan. But not only Japan. Japan is a blatant example of, of something that is an inherent flaw in all democratic capitalist societies. Mm. And it seemed to me that Tokyo as a city was standing for more than just Tokyo. It was standing for other manifestations of, of occupied well, cities and yeah, cities in similar situations. Well, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you think so. No, but I, 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 I mean, one reason why I deliberately took the Tokyo out of it was to try to show that... This is this this is a this is a book set during an actual occupation. But I mean, I personally believe we all live in occupied cities, and not only are the cities occupied, but we ourselves are occupied. Again, I would say by the manifestations of democratic capitalism. Mm.